Hi everyone, this is Arthur at Arthur Ease Your Mind here on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. I'm an intuitive consultant, psychic advisor. So basically that means I just tell people I make stuff up and hope it happens. Just kidding. No, I actually do say that. But anyway, in the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the incredible love and support I've been receiving from this wonderful YouTube community, including the likes, the shares, and the beautiful comments. So thank you. And also a big shout out to subscribers to this channel, old and new. Yes, I said new. New. So if you're not a subscriber yet, we'll wait. Hit the button. Come on. Okay. Ring. Hit the bell. Good. Now, don't you feel much better? Thank you. So I've also been asked when I'm going to start doing memberships and stuff like that, live streaming. Look, I can barely get this right. So I know enough to get me in trouble, but not enough to get me out. So give me a break. Besides, we're Mercury Retrograde. Why would I want to start something doing that? I mean, really. I remember a friend said, there's no such thing as Mercury Retrograde. I'm like, really? Well, if President Obama had an astrologer like some other presidents have had, he would not have released the Affordable Care Act during a Mercury retrograde. What happens during retrograde? Computers crash. What happened? This site crashed. Just saying. Mercury retrograde. And don't forget there's that wicked shadow period afterwards. Oh, and by the way, remember how I keep on saying about the welcome wagon lady? She stopped by. Yep, she did. Linda G herself. She was so wonderful. And she was my first guest. But I'll tell you, we did have a Mercury retrograde moment. Um, I barely got to the taping, recording, and I forgot to hit gallery. So if you look at it, it's like this pan and scan back and forth, back and forth. Remember that old game Pong, uh, P-O-N-G? It was like back and forth, back and forth. You know, the Atari game from 1972, 73, where we thought we were all so cool, you know, and it took up like, you know, half a block to play this little screen bank, this little screen game. So yeah, real cool. So that's what that was like. So that was a Mercury retrograde moment. So what I'm hoping for is to start doing some live shows and streaming and all that kind of stuff as we get to the end of the month of September or no later than when I'm dressed as a pumpkin doing shows for Halloween. Okay, so that'll be fun. Look forward to that, right? Mark it on your calendar. So anyway, that being said, I also released, finally released my guided meditation, Honoring Memories, Finding Peace, the guided grief meditation. As I've said in the past, this one was very special to me. It took about over two months to put it together. Uh, part of it was because I actually wrote an original score for it. But also, it was special because I had clients that asked me to do something for them because they had relatives had passed or friends. So it was an honor to me. And at the same time, I dedicated it to Linda and Mel. I asked them first. They said, fine. And why not? I mean, basically, that's my mama, Sita, and papa here at YouTube. So I love them both. They're incredible people. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. So here we go. I asked for questions, and I got some great ones this week. At the same time, before I get there, I just have to mention one thing. Donald Trump. Remember that guy? I mean, have you seen the videos he's putting out? They're like unhinged. I mean, he's like the crazy uncle that used to sit at the end of the table at Thanksgiving. We'd throw food at him so they'd shut up and eat. I mean, he's, he's Unhinged is the only word I can come up with. Or nuts. At least those are nice words. But anyway, I mean, he just goes ranting and raving and and he's reposting all this stuff from Q people. 
and we're not talking about LGBTQ people. And but I gotta say, for a man his height and weight, if they asked him what his height and weight was in court, would that be perjury? Just saying. In the meantime, his teeth are really white. I mean, have you seen them? Oh my God, they're like brilliant. They're white. Look at the video, you'll see. These pearly whites, just like all the MAGA people. Just saying. Well, so I did get a lot of questions this week. And there was one particular topic that came up in several questions from several people. And it had to do with Mitch McConnell. It's like Deb Hack, Mitch McConnell's health, Kentucky going blue or purple, Steve Myers, Moscow Mitch McTreason have another TIA. I saw it on my news feed yesterday and I thought it was an old story a month ago. Then Leah, hi, Mitch McConnell is having brain farts. Do we see him out of the office soon? Any thoughts on his replacement? You know, I got to be honest. I mean, I like the tease and joke and all that kind of stuff, but the guy's 81 years old and he had polio as a kid. Recently, he's been falling down, had a concussion. So when they said it was due to hydration, dehydration, in which planet? No, there are many strokes. That's the only thing I can, when I scan, that's what my guys were telling me, many strokes. However, he's in office until 2027. I mean, he's like the Energizer Bunny. I really think he may make it. So we'll see. But it was also nice that President Biden called him. Now, that's a class act. I don't think somebody else would have done that. They would have just made fun of him. Like they did a reporter who was handicapped. So anyway, moving forward. So Mitch, I do feel his duties may be not as strong as they have been all these years. But I do feel he's going to try and make it. So God bless him, I guess. I don't agree with the man on anything he does and anything he says. And I love the fact that someone sends him turtle food every month. Really. Look it up. They do. But there's another question I got here from Dean F. Hi, Arthur. Can you read if Governor Bashir, I hope I said that right. I feel like a teacher mispronouncing everybody's name. Governor Bashir of Kentucky, a Democrat, will ignore the new law Mitch and reps put in place two years ago that governor must replace those that leave with someone in the same party. It is now being said that the governor will replace Mitch when he leaves with a Democrat. But if it goes to court, it will take a long time, and therefore his replacement is fine. So, if you don't understand, if you don't know what the law is, it's basically it's a law that was backed by McConnell that requires the governor, if someone leaves, he has twenty-one days to select a nominee from three people that they will choose, the party will choose, and then a special election will be held down the line and Bashir said that the law basically violates the 17th amendment of the U.S. Constitution which gives voters the right to directly cast ballots for senators rather than state legislators filling the seats also it's also in the constitution in the state constitution of Kentucky that the governor replaces and appoints whoever he wants. So I do feel if Mitch leaves, there may be some lawsuits, but I do feel he's replaced with a Democrat. So is it going purple, blue, purple, and then blue? Because people are tired of all the MAGA people treading saying don't tread on me but they tread on us so just saying 
So yeah, we can make fun of Mitch, but let's not. But I was talking to a friend the other day and I told her, we we're talking about McConnell and I said, look, you know, the man's fallen. And when I was younger, remember those commercials, I fell, but I can't get up. We thought they were who who make joke of them. Now that I'm older, they're not so funny anymore. So I told my friend, you know, if she comes to my place one day and she sees all these little bags in every room on the floor, not to worry about it. And she said, why? And I said, because if I fall, at least I have snacks. Ta-da. All right, moving. I had to say it. Moving on. So. So that's our Mitch. Mitch McFrozen. Anyway, Patricia Burke commented. How and when will the guns be removed from our streets? Other countries have managed to do that and school shootings have stopped. If they can do it, so can we. But how and when? Patricia Burke, I can sum it up in three words. Vote, vote, vote. That's right. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Vote, vote, vote. That's the only way people are not going to be able to buy, you know, assault rifles to shoot bunnies. And unfortunately, it's probably going to have to take someone losing their own children to gun violence, to their you know, precious little body being blown apart by some madman or woman. And it has to take something like that, I think, for them to get their attention. Because as long as it's not in their backyard, as long as they don't see it, doesn't touch them, they don't care. Just saying. So vote, vote, vote. And it's followed up by a comment by Joy. Hi, Arthur. Do you see a future in politics for David Hogg? You know, he was the survivor of the Stoneman Douglas high school shooting in 2018 in Parkland, Florida. He's a student turned activist. And he's launching, he's now active with, with a PAC, supporting progressives. And mark my words. Yes. And do you remember like years ago when he was in Washington, D.C. and little Clovenhost was like following him all around, like yelling at him and screaming on the street. And he was just very nonchalant, ignoring, you know, the flying monkey. We're talking about MGD, my tragic girlfriend. But anyway, um, yeah, he's going to go far. Also, I do feel there's a lot of progressives, younger progressives that are going to be making a splash. And don't forget, 2024 is going to bring a lot of new voters, young people to the table to vote. I mean, they're going to try and suppress them. It's not going to work. Never does. Let's get on paper, but in reality, people will show up even more. But we're talking about kids that have already survived shootings some of them more than once so yeah this is very special to them i think it's more special to them about voting and worrying about guns than worrying about oh i think this girl's transgender wants to join the wrestling team please (sighs) but yes in the same time there are three progressives that I keep on getting wonderful hits from. Justin Pearson from Memphis and Justin Jones from Nashville. They've already tried to shut them up. They already tried to get rid of them. It didn't work. It's not going to work. These men are voices. Voices of a decade. And there's another gal that I really love. And I see really great things in her going far. And that's Jasmine Felicia Crockett. Also an Aries. Yay. (laughs) She's um, 
a lawyer turned politician and who is the unit who's a US representative from Texas 30th congressional district. Now, if you want to giggle, you want to laugh, watch YouTube at when she is talking and has her exchanges with Bobart, MTG, all of them. She's class. She says what she has to say. And she says the most and the least amount of words. She's a class act. So they may suppress the vote. Ain't going to work. Moving on. Leah. <clears throat> Hello and thank you. What is the outlook for the war in Ukraine? Is an end near? Well, first of all, when I meditate on this, I keep on getting that they're moving forward. They're not retreating. They're not moving backwards and reclaiming land. Now, apparently this past week, they had fake elections or electors in, that were Russian voting for mayors that will then report to Moscow. Fake electors. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? I think maybe. Anyway, kidding aside. I've been predicting for a while now that I felt within two years, Ukraine will be part of NATO. Actually, I kept on feeling 18 months, but I'm going to say two years. Now, that means the war's ended. At the same time, I got a hit when I was on a show with Linda on Monday. We were talking about Putin and I don't see him around after March. And it's his own people. I don't see him falling out of an airplane or a window. I don't know. He does have a train. Who knows? I just see things changing for March. Because right now for him, I always read it. He's like, beginning of the end and there's another comment from Rima Milan I can't hear anyone right? hi Arthur really enjoy your humor and common sense at least someone does question are Trump and Putin spiritually tied to each other the energy suggests when one goes down the other will follow immediately well Basically, what we have here is Tweedle T and Tweedle P. I don't think you need to be a psychic to know that one. They're going like, you know, one falls, the other one falls. Not soon enough. But yes, I feel there's some type of spiritual connection between the two of them. And it's weird. But they both bring out the worst in each other. So it makes us stronger. So yeah, and then speaking of Russia, Ursula Prone. Hi, Arthur. Is Prigozhin the mastermind behind the crash and thus alive? If ever so, will we soon know the truth? Many thanks in advance. With lots of love and light. Back at you. Um, in all honesty, I feel that Prigozhin crossed over. He was on that plane. It was not a double, even though the DNA is coming from Russia. But I, there's shrapnel found in the bodies. It was just, Prigozhin did not mastermind that. Tweedle P did. Okay? And believe me, he'll be paying for that because karma's a bitch. So, Next question, Gigi Ma, the G G M A, Gigi Ma. My question is Tony Arnato not being talked about. Was he the go between for Secret Service and Trump? And will he see jail time? Anthony Arnato was a former White House Deputy Chief of Staff. Who was also at one point 
high up in the Secret Service. He did in, was interviewed by January 6th committee, committee, House Select Committee, and interviewed last about five to six hours. But I also, I may have this wrong, but I also believe he refused to take an oath. So we'll see about that. I do feel there's some issues and trouble coming up for him. A lot of people there's trouble for. But what I get is Jack Smith, what we're seeing him do with the D.C. court. One person, four indictments, clean. And Judge Chutnik, she's going far. She put her hand down. I mean, she put her fist down and said, okay. And she's going to be number one. That's going to be the trial to start everything. Because if you remember, Fonnie Willis actually had wanted March 4th. But then when Cheeseburger and Kraken said they want a speedy trial, and by Georgia law, that has to be done within, by November, by the end of November, uh, end of October. By November 1st, she has to start. And so that's when the judge gave the date of October 23rd. So March 4th became available. DC got it. And she's going to spearhead everything. I mean, forget about Eileen Cannon. I mean, this is not, it's kind of hard to forget. But at the same time, Whatever she does, it's going to be yesterday's mashed potatoes because DC is going to be won. And Judge Chutney, well, she wants to get out there. I mean, she really does want to get this done because if you think about it, who are we going to vote for? Let's get this done before the election. <clears throat> and I've always been saying, sorry, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> if Mr. Trump or Tweedle T was really that innocent. He'd be demanding a speedy trial. He'd be getting get it done now. No, he's delaying, delay, delay. What does that tell you? So anyway, there's a lot going on. Now also, Arnado was the one who supposedly talked to Cassidy Hutchinson when she said that she was told by him that Trump allegedly tried to turn an SUV around after leaving the lips so he can go to the Capitol. And the Secret Service said no. Of course, he's denying it. I believe Ms. Hutchinson. So there's still a lot to come out. And Deborah Galinsky um, I'm concerned about the Secret Service, FBI, and CIA. Have they weeded out the dishonest ones, and will they eventually get charged for their participation in 45 crime spree while in office? Yes. I do feel they have a list, they have names, they have everything. They just have not released a lot of stuff yet. But yes. I do get them being in trouble. Catherine Stiglitz. Hi, Arthur. Love your show. Thank you. Will Kevin McCarthy move forward with his attempt to impeach President Biden? Also, Cheryl McNutt commented, Hi, will the Republicans succeed in pinning a scandal on Joe Biden during his remaining years in office? No. Number one, McCarthy can say whatever he wants for a soundbite. He does not have the votes. Ain't going to happen. Good talking points. It's great to hear on Fox, but that's it. It ain't going to happen. Now, the Republicans can try and pin scandals on Joe Biden. But I like what Jamie Raskin's doing as they're trying to go after Hunter Biden which I always say, remind me when he ran for office, when he was working for the administration. Never. But Raskin 
now wants to go after Jared Kushner and his ties with the emolument emollients clause because right after he left the White House as an aide he gets two billion dollars from Saudi Arabia for a fund to manage oh and he gets paid $25 million a year as his salary. Yeah, something doesn't seem right. I'm sorry. Something, it's nothing to say. But again, as I've said in the past, my guides have always told me he's going to pay for what happened to Khashoggi. My guy say he was partially responsible for that and covering it up. So it's going to come out. Believe me, it always does. V. Martin commented. is a good topic. Section 3 of the 14th Amendment is gaining momentum to remove Trump from state polls. Will this make it to the Supreme Court for a ruling? I want to say yes. I got a yes on it when I was meditating on it last night. At the same time, I don't see where the Supreme Court is going to side with Trump. Because basically, okay, he's a dictator. Let's get the dictator in and then we'll lose our heads and it'll all be over. Ain't going to happen. At least that's the way I see it. I could be wrong. But no. Nope. And besides that, what's the, what's the question here? Sorry. Here it is. My favorite topic. Ace commented, do you feel Ginny Thomas will be indicted? And also, Julie Lilly, when is Thomas being removed from the Supremes? And when do Democrats demand court expansion? First of all, Ginny Thomas. Do you remember Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost when she turned around to Demi Moore and said, girl, you're in trouble? Girl, you're in trouble. Believe me, Jack Smith has her down as one of the co-conspirators. Unnamed co-conspirators. Not only that, her fingerprints are all over stuff in Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and it's going to come and bite her big time. Now, a year ago, I predicted that Clarence Thomas was going to have to step down, and it was because of her. And now this stuff is coming out about him. I originally said a year ago that I thought he was going to be leaving in October of this year. I'm wrong. But I do feel it's October of next year. Yay. Which also means that Biden gets to choose a new Supreme Court justice. And they can't pull, it's an election year, we can't, yeah, right. We heard that story. But wouldn't it be great if they asked Anita Hill to be a Supreme Court justice? Just kidding, it's, 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 it's one of the things I think about when I can't sleep. But also, Judge Chutnik is great. She's right up there. I mean, everybody loves her. I mean, she's got an incredible record. And I actually believe she may eventually get on that court and has nothing to do with weaponizing the court system to go after Tweedledee. Okay. So you ask about demand expansion, Julie Lilly. I've been feeling yes on that. I've been saying within the next five, six years, 
it's going to take that long. But between five to six years, there will be, instead of nine, there will be 13. And the reason for it is, we have nine Supreme Court justices at the moment. Why? Because when they voted for it, there were nine appellate courts. Now there are 13 appellate courts. So it could be expanded to 13. That's what I keep on getting. So time will tell on that. But also, I do feel that Biden will be able to, you know, get somebody in there. And I do feel it's going to be female. So it's going to be interesting. So, yeah. Thomas being removed from Supremes. I think Diana Ross would mind. Just kidding. Um, as I said before, yes, I do have a brain. I'm not Ray Boulder. Um, speaking of judges, from Kathy Holcomb, there seems to be a huge issue in the U.S. with judges using their religious beliefs to make rulings instead of using legal precedent. When will this stop? Also, will there be a time when religion will be taxed? I am so tired of religion churches interfering in politics when they should be clear separation of church and state. And don't even get me started how churches receive COVID relief funds. Thank you. Yes, it's disturbing. Again, three words. Vote, vote, vote. You know, in a lot of states, they actually vote judges. They vote for judges. And just have to go out and, you know, campaign. Vote, vote, vote. I do feel eventually things will change. Now, as far as church is being taxed, that would be nice. But I don't see it happening right now. But I do feel once the lunatics are out of the house, literally, because Jack Smith has their names as well, then we get a form of a semblance of sanity in the next three years. And the religious nut jobs, sorry. But then again, I tell born again Christians to be born again until they get it right. That basically, they're not going to get away with, you know, pulling out a Bible and quoting. Because, as you said, separation of church and state. And I love the fact that there are actually people going against these states that have these heinous abortion laws. Because it's against their religion. Why is pro white Protestants' religion better than Jewish people or anyone else or Muslims? Because in there, they believe in abortion. So talk about selective religion. But I do feel that's going to change. So I hope that resonates with you, Ms. Holcomb. Now, Sweetie Darling Lulu, I love your name. Hey, Arthur, do you or your guides think, think who removed the panic buttons from Pelosi and other congressional reps during January 6th? Inside job. It was well organized. It was, they probably cooked from the day before. So, and Mr. Smith, who goes to Washington, has the names. I'm telling you. 
he's like Santa Claus. He's got a list and he's making it twice. Now. Pixie dust. My question is about boomers being blamed for a lot. Climate change, our voting, etc. I am concerned about ageism, especially in the U.S. Yeah, it is kind of bad, but, you know, 70s and new 40. And, you know, they keep on going about Biden being too old. I'm sorry, I want a man with experience around the country. You know, I'm not a grifter. Also, someone who's not insane. But as far as ageism, it's something that's going to be around. But as they, over the years, they're going to start raising the age for Social Security, Medicare, all that kind of stuff. Then older people are going to have to work more and longer. So they really can't use ageism. At the same time, in a lot of Asian countries, if you're 35, they won't hire you. That's over the hill. So, just saying. Gladys. I was pronouncing your name wrong, so I'll just say Gladys. Hi, Arthur. I live in North Carolina. We have a Democrat governor now. He is going out in 2024 after his second term. Do you see him being replaced with our with our Democrat nominee? Yeah, I do. Like I said, lots of things are changing. People are going and standing up for their rights. Women's rights. Religious rights. The other side. Our side. Separate insurance from state. But also gay rights, trans rights, all that stuff. Because they're making issues that aren't there. Banning books. It still irks me that they ban the life of Rosa Parks. And that beautiful black girl, poet laureate. Her stuff was banned in Florida, in the school district, by one woman who said Oprah wrote it. Why does this one woman, this nut job, have that much say? So, remember I said vote, vote, vote? I mean it. But we got to do it at a local level, too. I mean, they were able to get the nut jobs in the school districts. I mean, they're signing laws that teachers will be penalized and go to prison if they mention something about transgenders in school. I mean, what happened to, they're such good Christians, live and let live or treat others as you treat yourself. You know. Why don't they just make a big gold statue? But instead of a bull, well, they can melt down Trump's toilet. It's gold. And worship that. And then Charles Heston comes down and blows it up. With Cecil B. DeMille as the voice of God. Anyway. North Carolina is going to be fine. Crazy Shark 22. Do you ever see China surpassing the U.S. as number one economy? No. Sorry. Um, no. The U.S. And not because it's you know, we're number one. It's just the way it is. So will the U.S. survive? Sure. That's yes and Mandarin. So... As far as them, they got trouble now. 
I mean, yeah, years ago they had billionaires and all that kind of stuff. But all that's folding. All that's going the wayside, those people. And I don't see where their economy will take over. Don't forget, Biden has the things coming back to the states. They're not getting the refunds and the tax breaks and everything for taking jobs overseas. And I do get irked when I see made in China on everything. I'm not racist. I'm not any of those things. It's just that, why can't we do it here? Because the dollar's cheaper over there. Or, you know, ask about ask Trump. She would know. In the sweatshops. Okay. This next question from Auntie P. Kitty. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I actually pray to St. Jude about this. I really do. In fact, where I live, it's near this little church that Danny Thomas used to go to. And there's an alcove for St. Jude. And one time I was in the church, I was just watching, looking, observing. And in the back, I heard a voice saying, how may I help you, son? So I'm like, I turned around and said, father. And then I was like, ooh, Monsignor, because it's purple. And he said, how can I help you? I said, well, I'm just, you know, observing the St. Jude statue and all. He goes, well, you know, Danny Thomas. I said, I know that's the problem. Now that he passed away, do I pray to him or St. Jude? He laughed so hard. Then he said, both. <laughs> and he said, anything else? I said, yeah, tell those old ladies to get out of the way. By the candles, get out of the way. They're all mine. He said, you only need one. I said, I know, but I like backups. I'm an Aries. Anyway, why do I pray to St. Jude? Because will the joy ever be removed from his post position at the U.S. Postal Service? I get a yes on that. I mean, I don't know how this guy has Teflon around him. But the Board of Governors has to vote him out. And they haven't had a really good Board of Governors to do so. They will now. But I don't see that he'll be able to damage anything like he did in the last election, where he was, you know, having branding machines destroyed for sorting and stuff like that. No, he's, I think he knows his days are numbered. You don't hear his name anymore. And yeah, so don't, don't worry about having to buy him a forever stamp for Christmas. Okay. And send the card. No need to. Now, last question. It's not really politics and world, per se. Mystical like goddess, when will there be a good alternative to YouTube so that psychics don't have to say for entertainment purposes only to be free from censorship penalties? I don't see it happening. I don't mind for entertainment purposes only. Really? that's what this is we're entertainers right but i don't see it happening but i don't have a little sign that says for entertainment purposes only going on on my banner yet i probably will want to do live streaming and i'm dressed as a pumpkin but that's a whole nother story so there you go people as one friend said they call you arthurites and somebody complained about that so i'm just going to say my friends Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the likes, the shares, the comments, as I said before. And if you have questions, ask. I'm usually here on Thursday, Friday nights. And then during the week, I'm guesting on some show with wonderful psychics. And the only reason I go is because they invite me. I don't ask anybody. And then, 
And then eventually, once I learn how to stream and all that kind of stuff, then they'll be coming over to my, you know, we'll have potluck over at my place. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys really do mean the world to me because I have no life. This is it. Just kidding. Sort of. But anyway, good night.